There should be more protection for renters. Lots of talk, wasn't there, been about help for mortgage holders. In fact, the, uh, the uh, Labour this week of demanding help for, for mortgage holders, which was actually pretty much already organised in place by Jeremy Hunt, uh, the Chancellor, last week. But um, Labour are calling for these protections. They want urgent protections for preventing risks of evictions. Uh, Richard uh, Blanco is a property expert and he joins us right now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Um, so what exactly are Labour wanting the government to do? Um, well, what they're saying is they want the government to get on with the renters reform bill, uh, which the government announced uh, in May, and that will remove no fault eviction. Um, and uh, they also want a code of practice for letting agents. And indeed, there was a group that reported in 2019 about letting agents uh, supposed to uh, have qualifications mm. and also be registered and for there to be a code of practice. And yeah. that still hasn't been implemented. Um, and they're also want, wanting notice periods to be lengthened uh, to four months. And they say they want no fault evictions to be uh, suspended until the rent is reformed. Because there, there was a concern, wasn't there? I mean, especially during the COVID period where lots of people might be on furlough, couldn't afford their rent. and, and um, um, But then landlords were saying, well, hold on a minute, I'm not allowed to evict somebody, but they're not paying the rent. I need the rent to pay my mortgage. That's become even worse now, obviously, with uh, uh, with, with, rent, with, with mortgage rates going up. Um, but the idea of ending no fault evictions, it, it, you, you'd still be able to, if you're a landlord, to say... I'm, I'm going to put the rent up because I need to put the rent up. And also it's a private, you know, it's, I'm a private landlord. I'm, this is my income. Um, you, you'd, a bit, but you wouldn't be able to just say if someone's complained about the gas boiler not being mended, just evict someone summarily. It's, there, there is protection on both sides there. Um, it's true. I think it's a bit of a myth that landlords just evict tenants willy-nilly. There is, there often is a, a reason why landlords will evict tenants. It yeah. may be, it's often because they're in arrears. And let's not forget that well over 90% of tenancies are ended by the tenant. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean it, is, it is actually, a, a, I say, a complete fallacy that landlords, these horrible, evil people, like people I do know, I'm not one of them, who have a second property which they rent out. They're just delighted to find a good tenant and they'll just keep, even if they know they could get a higher rent, they, we've got a good tenant, they're staying Put, they look after the place, they pay their rent every month, we'll stick with them. Absolutely, and it's a bit of a myth as well that tenants, you know, keep having to move every six months. The average tenancy lasts over four years. Really? The problem with getting, yes, yes, and that's Office of National Statistics, um, English Housing Survey data. The problem with getting rid of no-fault eviction is the courts are moving incredibly slowly at the moment. It can take you up to 10 months yeah. if you need to go through the court process on what's called a Section 8 process. And this is why, really, we can't afford to abolish no-fault eviction until... Oh. The courts have been modernised. Yeah. Um, I know you know, landlords have said to me that yeah, you go through the process and if there was you know, a council tenant or you know, paying the housing benefit being paid, they just physically cannot get rid of these people. Um, they just say, I don't have to pay. They wait until they're evicted, but that means they have to send the bailiffs in. Very expensive process. They never get any of that money back. Um, and, we, and we even had a case where people's housing benefit was being paid directly to them instead of to the landlord, which I thought was always insane, actually. Um, and, uh, and, and, they, and, and nothing the landlords can do about it for months on end. Um, and so we, the taxpayer, have paid for someone's rent. The landlord hasn't got it. The, 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 the person who's got that money has spent it on whatever. We can all make assumptions. Um, and, uh, and then people go to the courts. I mean, and then people say, oh, isn't it terrible someone doesn't want to have someone on housing benefit as a, as a, uh, on their lease? Well, of course not, because they know they've got no protection. I absolutely agree on that, Julie. I mean, the rules on housing benefit were changed in 2008, so the payments, instead of going direct to the landlord, go direct to the tenant. I mean, what I'd rather see is for the tenant at least to be able to have a choice and say, I'd prefer it to go yeah. direct to the landlord. The other issue is that house, local housing allowance has been frozen uh, since 2021, and uh, what that means is that the amount that tenants get has fallen way below market, market rents. rents. Uh, uh, and, you know, we... The, the National Residential Landlords Association and landlords like myself would like to see that unfrozen so that um, tenants get more support from, from government on housing benefits. Well, more support from taxpayers. I mean, the housing benefit uh, bill is something, isn't it? Are we up to about 20 billion now, something or more than that? Yes, quite possibly. Um, well, so we're subsidising private rents a lot of the time. And of course, it would have been less when there was more social housing available. We sold a lot of that off, haven't built enough of it. But there's, there are millions of people who can never afford a private rent on their own pretty much anywhere. They're not living in, you know, Mayfair, are they, most of these people? Well, 
I think the sell-off of three million council homes between 1979 and 1995 is very much at the root of the housing yeah. prices. I mean, fantastic for the people who were able to do that. And I, I, I was talking to someone last night who said their whole life was changed by the fact their mum was able to do this and, and, and how amazing it was, but, but not actually good for our housing stock overall because it wasn't replaced. That's exactly it, Julie. I think the issue was it wasn't replaced. The governments were not allowed to use receipts from the sales mm. of council homes to build more. And so what's happened is the private rented sector has filled in the gap. It's taken over yeah. from where social housing left yeah. off. But in 2015, George Osborne introduced um, tax reforms that disincentivise landlords. And what we're seeing is a huge sell-off now. 33% of landlords say that they will sell some or all of their properties in the next 12 months. Is that not good it. news for people who say first-time buyers or people want to you know, trade up because they've, you know, they're planning to have children and, then, and they're, they're, there are more properties available and they're not competing with private landlords for them? Well, first of all, there's a question over whether first-time buyers are competing with landlords for the same right. properties, and there isn't necessarily evidence to suggest that. Um, the other thing is, you know, it may have been a good idea in 2015 to promote home ownership, but now with mortgage rates, you know, two-year fixes averaging yeah. close to 6%, we need a change of policy. And, uh, you know, we're seeing 40 people chase after the same property yeah. uh, for rent at the moment. And Absolutely. what we need is for, is for government to reform taxation so that landlords will stay in the business and invest in more property and uh, and ultimately if we had slightly too many rental properties then of course rents would come down and also poor quality uh rental properties wouldn't get rented and, and that's really the situation we need to be in well it's fantastic to talk to you really appreciate that richard blanco uh, who is a property expert 731 is the time and get emma revel's thoughts on that and then we're going to be talking to a man who narrowly escaped that horrific uh, russian uh, missile strike uh, that killed 11 including children uh, in eastern ukraine he was due to go to that pizza restaurant and thankfully didn't because he had to work uh, work may well have saved his life that's colin freeman we'll talk to him next this is talk breakfast I'm Mike Graham and this is Talk TV. You know what we're going to do now, don't you? It's Plank of the Week time. We do it every Friday night and goes out at 7pm and you don't want to miss it. Do you know why? Because it includes all of the people that you love to hate. It might even include some of the people that you love to love. It might be Harry and Meghan. It might be Sadiq Khan. It could be a football team. It could be the Prime Minister. It could be the leader of the opposition. It might even be someone up in Scotland. You never know. Watch us every Friday, 7pm. Good morning to you. This is Talk Breakfast with me, Julia Hartley. 7.32 is the time. Emma Revel is still with me. She's a political commentator. Um, Emma, interesting to talk about you know, what Labour want to announce about these uh, rental reforms. They've got a, they've got a, a minister doing the rounds, the, the, the horrific human being that is Neil O'Brien, uh, who, of course, is the man who set up uh, that smearing website against people like me and Carl Hennigan, Sinetra Gupta and others during COVID. That man is never going to come on my show, never will come on my show. I, I don't care if he becomes prime minister never ever come in on my show um uh, but uh, uh we we later on going to be talking to wes streeting who's the shadow health secretary he's got a brilliant uh, new book out about his life and we're going to be talking to him and we'll touch on all of that with him as well but emerald um <laughs> we often have this thing where renters poor victims um uh whether evicted or you know, trying to you know trying to just sort of find somewhere to live and landlords baddies horrible people where where's the where does the truth lie Somewhere in the middle, as in yeah. most cases, uh, you know, renting is almost one of my favourite things to talk about because it affects me quite so much as a as a London renter with really no hope of getting a mortgage anytime soon. Um, and as most things, any proposals, uh, not just you know the ones that Labour have made today, often the ones that government come out with as well, they are sticking plasters to cover up the fact that we haven't built enough houses. Fundamentally, All together that now, is the everyone, problem. come on, come on, you've been listening and watching for long enough. What is the mantra of this show? Build. Build more homes. Build more homes. It's, there are so so few problems in this country that yeah. cannot be solved by building more homes. So many. It's just extraordinary. It's so frustrating. Why does no one do it? It's it's planning usually. You know, Nim it's NIMBYs. I'm keeping it's NIMBYs, the building companies. Yeah. Always at the NIMBYs. Is no, it no, no. It's it's NIMBYs and planning departments. You tell know. you what. I tell you what's really noticeable when you see like how quickly it takes to put up a home here, opposed to you know, like re rebuilding work in places like Ukraine being bombed by the Russians. I mean, mm -hmm. really could take some lessons. Could we not the